been quite a few um, results in consumer over the last couple of days. Um, some topical ones I just wanted to touch on that I haven't yet, which is uh, Levisa to start with. Um, so Levisa obviously widely held in the network. The operating earnings yesterday were pretty much as expected. Uh, sales growth was 30%, um, and EBITDA growth up 26%. Now, both of those were, were in line with our forecast. So in terms of the operating earnings of the business, exactly as we'd expected. Um, like for like sales growth was 6.3% over the course of the year, very strong first half. It did fade into the second half as they lapped the price rises. Uh, but again, that was slightly better than we'd expected. Um, DNA and finance costs were higher than forecast, which meant that MPAT came in a little bit below our numbers, uh, and that flows through into, into uh, future forecasts as well. Um, but the key thing here is the rollout of new stores. So 210 opened during the year, um, a few closed, so 172 is a net, um, and that was pretty much as expected as well. Uh, 12 new markets um, in FY23. So I would just think a few years back to, to Leviso, who was in a handful of countries, it's now in 39. Um, 12 added in, in FY23, including big countries like Mexico and Italy um, and Spain. Um, shares were down 6% yesterday. Um, now, that I think is mainly a reflection of the fact that they printed negative like-for-like -like sales growth, both in the fourth quarter and in the first few weeks of the new year um, of um, uh, minus 5% or so uh, in both periods. Now, what needs to be understood is that's against an extremely strong comp. So in the fourth quarter and in the first uh, few weeks of trading last year, the comps were 21% as they had just put in the, the price increases. So against that, it was never going to be as significant. Um, we'd actually anticipated that there would be minus 10% like for likes in the first seven weeks. Um, it was minus 5.8. But of course, the market doesn't like to see negative comps out of Levisa. So I think that was the, re the reflection uh, that we saw in the share price yesterday. That and the fact that Levisa on the public call wouldn't comment about um, their, their outlook intentions with regard to rollout. They wouldn't commit to a number. Now, of course, there's a lot of people in this, in this room in particular who are avid Levisa watchers who would know that Levisa never talk about their rollout intentions. They never put their name next to a number. Um, and Victor said on the call yesterday that he doesn't want to get into the business of speculation. Now, sadly, I am in the business of speculation, um, so I have to uh, come up with a number, and, and I think they'll do a similar number in, in FY24, um, and that's what I'm forecasting. In fact, I'm forecasting a slightly higher number of stores to be rolled out. Um, why am I confident about that? Well, partly because they are in 12 new countries. If you think about getting into a new country, you're putting in license arrangements, you're making uh, arrangements with, uh, with landlords for the first time, you're trying to work out the consumer, you're trying to work out what they're going to buy, what they're going to pay for it. Once you've done one store, it's a lot easier to do the next one. Um, and if you look at the, uh, the current uh, makeup of their network, there are a number of big countries where they have just a handful of, of stores. So Spain, they've got a single store. Uh, in Dubai, one store. If you've been to Dubai, there's a lot of shops there. Um, one La Vista store is not going to be where they stay. Um, Mexico's got four. Uh, Mexico's a big country. Um, Italy uh, has got seven. Canada's got seven. They're not going to stay there. That's subscale. So it's going to grow significantly from there, and it gets a lot easier once you've done that first couple of stores. But most importantly, and this is something that was not discussed on the public call, but did come out um, in, the, in the Morgan's call later on that afternoon, was that they've established a, uh, a wholly foreign-owned enterprise in China. And Victor said they intend to enter mainland China this financial year. Now, I want to stress that was not talked about in the public call. Um, that was uh, unique to, to the Morgan's call that he talked about that. But that could be huge. China is, um, I don't need to tell you, quite a large country. Um, and I'm sure they're not going to put a handful of stores in there. So when I'm talking about 200 stores um, being opened in FY24, they could do that in China. Um, I don't think they will. But just think about the scale that they could do here. So I I've taken my numbers up. Um, my EBITDA numbers go up by a couple of percent in the, in the outer year. Um, now, I have put through higher DNA and higher finance costs, which flows through into my MPAT. But the fact of the matter is this business is, is going from strength to strength. Um, now is not the time to be uh, quavering about Levisa. Now is the time to be really interested. And if it continues to be weak for whatever reason, then, then I would be um, strongly suggesting that you think about your client's buying a position. Um, and then just quickly on, on Domino's, um, which was uh, day before yesterday, just very quickly want to talk about this one. Um, now, again, 
EBITDA was in line with expectations, 357, that's down 12%, exactly as we'd forecast. Um, but it's a pretty poor year for Domino's. Um, every region reported lower earnings. Um, there was higher DNA and finance costs. It's becoming a bit of a theme this reporting season. And so MPAP was down 26%, which is a bad, bad year for Domino's. Um, and that was actually 5% worse than we, we'd forecast. Uh, and worse still, they came very, very close to breaching covenant um, towards the end of the year. So their, their banking covenant is three times net debt to EBITDA on a pre-ASB 16 basis, so at 2.9. Um, that's really, really high. However, Domino's was absolutely definitive that debt has peaked and is coming down. Um, they're putting through lower capex, they've introduced a DRP, and they've upgraded their, um, their, their cost savings from the initiatives that they're putting through reasonably significantly to 33 to 40 million bucks. Um, so what we'll see is that earnings will go up, debt will come down. Uh, 12 months time, I expect them to be at 2.4 times. Uh, they were very clear on the call, we are not going to breach covenant and we're not going to raise equity. Um, so if that's what the shorts have been concerned about, they're, they're wrong. Um, and that's, I suspect, why we saw a bit of short covering uh, during the day and the stock was up almost 10%. Um, so I think the worst is over. Um, I say that with some trepidation because I've said it before. Um, but I do think we're in a position now where Domino's is getting back to growth. If you look at the first few weeks of the year, there was 7% same store sales growth in both Australia and Europe. Um, Asia is taking a little bit longer to, to catch up, uh, but it will get there. Um, so the business is back in growth. The balance sheet is looking a lot better um, and, rec and recommend an ad recommendation at this, um, at this share price as well. So, so Domino's is, is I think, um, one to, to continue to watch. And then just a one-liner um, on Universal Store, which reported yesterday, uh, slightly better than expectations, although the start to FY24 was pretty soft. But that's against very significantly um, strong comps, all about festivals and splendor in the grass, which I had no... Uh, understanding of um but uh, apparently that was what it was all about um they will come good um the market shrugged it off and share price ended up uh, in positive territory um and just quickly on step one um beat our numbers uh, back to growth um doubled their profit introduced a dividend which we did not expect um of five cents shares were up um 18 percent yesterday um i expect you're going to see dividends going forward and, and the stock will start to uh, retrace some of its lost ground <music> Thank you.